The January 6th rioter, whose lawyer said he was, quote, following presidential orders, was found guilty yesterday on all six charges he faced. Dustin Thompson was the first defendant who tried to convince jurors it was former President Donald Trump who was at fault for the Capitol insurrection. Thompson's attorney argued, quote, Donald Trump encouraged people like Thompson to storm the Capitol and took advantage of, quote, vulnerable people like his client. A Justice Department prosecutor told jurors in closing arguments Trump was not on trial. They should not consider Trump's actions, even if they think he is to blame for what happened on January 6th. Thompson was found guilty of a range of charges, including obstructing Congress's duty to certify the final results of the election. That count carries a sentence of up to 20 years in prison. The judge, a Bush appointee, ordered Thompson to remain in jail until his sentencing. He called the defense, quote, disingenuous, but stressed he believed Trump's conspiracy series helped lead to the attack on the Capitol. Joining us now, justice reporter for NBC News, Ryan Riley, and state attorney for Palm Beach County, Dave Ehrenberg. Good morning to you both. Ryan, you've been on all these cases right from the beginning. So this was an attempt, the attorney effectively infantilizing his client, saying he didn't know what he was doing. He was laid off from his job. He just wanted the respect and approval of Donald Trump. He was just following orders. A uh, jury didn't buy it. Yeah, it was kind of an embarrassing defense for this defendant to sort of have to sit through because, of course, a lot of these individuals who believe that the election was stolen think they're the smartest people in the room, think that, you know, they, they know the truth, they know what the media is and telling them, and, and they're above everyone. And then what he has to kind of admit here is that he didn't really know anything. He actually didn't even know who Rudy Giuliani was, he admitted. He said that mm. he didn't realize that he was actually the lawyer for the president. So, yeah, it was something that he had to sit through. He had to sit through his wife's testimony talking about how he got sucked into these conspiracy theories after he got laid off as a, from his job as an exterminator while she was still working. He was sitting at home, and it, at one point, um, she even mentioned that, you know, on January 6th, she was kind of relieved to have the house to herself, and it was a lot quieter at home when he was off <laughs> storming the Capitol and stealing this coat rack and stealing a bottle of liquor uh, from the nation's capital. So, uh, Dave Ehrenberg, I'm curious, given all that has been revealed over the past, uh, the many months since the attack on the Capitol, uh, about what was going on in the administration, the text messages to Mark Meadows and to the people around Trump, Trump's behavior, Trump avidly watching TV, seeming to lap it all up, so excited about these people all running around for him and assaulting the Capitol. Um, could the Trump made me do it uh, argument be effective and could it be used a lot more? Yeah, Mika, I think yesterday hurt that argument that Trump made me do it because this verdict was expected, but it was also important because it shows that juries are not going to give these January 6th defendants a pass for being allegedly under Trump's spell. And this case was different than the previous case where the defendant was acquitted because he said the police officers waved him in. And I think as a result, you'll see more of that defense than this defense that, hey, look, Trump made me do it. You have to believe that Trump's, the defendant's lawyers knew that Washington, D.C. went for Biden by over 92 percent of the vote. So this defense seem crafted towards a Washington, D.C. jury pool to focus away from their, def their defendant and towards Donald Trump, who they called evil and sinister. But during cross-examination, yeah, as Ryan said, the prosecutors mocked the defendant's alleged helplessness. They asked them, uh, did, did, were you a child or a 36-year-old college graduate on that day? And on that day, on January 6th, did you get dressed all by yourself? And he said, yes. He said, because you're not a child, right? Said correct, and that's why this jury mm. came back in under three hours with a guilty verdict. Also, this whole uh, Trump made me do it. I was just following orders. Defense that kind of defense has never worked well in history, and that didn't change yesterday. Hey, Ryan, it's Jonathan. I want you to know that three minutes later, I'm still chuckling at the defendant's wife saying that the, she was happy the house was quieter when he was off storming the Capitol. <laughs> um, but I wanted to ask you also about this. This is a successful prosecution in front of the judge and jury. We're seeing more, a couple more of these cases now actually go to trial uh, and have largely ended up in the prosecutor's favor. Uh, give us a sense as to how many more should we be expecting? Do you think this would be perhaps a warning sign to other defendants who might be more now more inclined to take a deal? Yeah, this is going to go on for a
two, three years, four years from now, we're still going to have these trials going on because, you know, right now we're closing in on 800 cases and only 250 of those individuals have pleaded guilty. But if you step back and you look at the total scope of this and the total universe, you know, I've talked, I've worked a lot with the citizen sleuths who are investigating this and it's been confirmed by the Justice Department that over 2,500 people entered the Capitol on January 6th. Add on to that the hundreds of people who assaulted officers outside of the Capitol who are still wanted by the FBI. If you go on the FBI's website right now, you're going to find a list of photos of 350 people who either assaulted officers or who actually assaulted members of the media outside the Capitol who are still wanted by the FBI and um, are not under arrest. So we have a very, very long time and a long road ahead here. Mm.